I heard this really strange sound coming from the ceiling in my bathroom. What? What is that? It did sound like a little bird. And I'm on the first floor of a three-story building, and it was in my ceiling. It was bizarre. They are called the Sydney Wildlife Organization, but unfortunately no one could come out to me that night. And I thought, well, you know, the ceiling board is pretty soft. I've got a sharp knife. Let me just do it but not too close, I don't want to hurt it. And I managed to cut a hole through. And when I reached in, I, I couldn't get anything. There was a beam in the way. And I called the Sydney Wildlife people again. Within half an hour, a volunteer arrived. So he said the only other option is to cut another hole. Well, I was like, just do it. He reached in and felt around and he goes, whoop. And he brought out this tiny little wriggly featherless hatchling but it was very tiny and very cold. And he's like, no, don't worry, I've got expert carers that, that will help. Another member of Sydney Wildlife called and just said, Tilly, I've heard you're possibly able to look after a really young lorikeet. And I was sort of expecting to get like a big fluffy thing with some color in it. And then he came to my house and dropped his lorikeet off and it was so tiny. He was like the size of an egg. It was so small he couldn't hold his head up. He couldn't really function any part of his body. I, I, I hadn't raised one that small. So I got a little nest going for him with some tissues and a nice warm container and he was on a heat pad. Happy peanut, everyone. <laughs> I'd just be checking him constantly like, are you okay, are you okay? Like a week after I'd had him, he started opening his eyes. Then all of a sudden he was like, here I am started introducing him to another bird. Cashew was a bit bigger. Peanut was just like, oh yes, like a, a bigger thing that I can kind of nuzzle into. It was lovely to watch the way they loved each other. When he was big enough to hold himself upright, he would go for little runs. Come on, come on then. <laughs> he was so cute. He started growing down, so not quite feathers. And then he started growing the beautiful rainbow colors. I took them out and outside Avery, and there were four of them at that time, where they could practice flying and I put foliage in there so that they could practice seeing what they would see when they were free. On his release day, she let me come and say goodbye to him. To see him being able to be a normal like, rainbow lorikeet is just amazing. <laughs> we opened the Avery doors. Are you ready? You're gonna open the door and you can come out. You're gonna come out? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they did nothing. <laughs> but then, once they realized they were free, they were everywhere. The next day, mum said, Tilly, Tilly, there's a lorikeet in the tree. And there's Peanut. He comes to visit me. Hello, Weenie Nut. I haven't seen you in a while. How are you? Oh. Sometimes he and his friends sit on the deck and just sit there and groom each other by the kitchen windows. It was almost every day at first, but he doesn't come back as often anymore. But I know that he's having a good life on his own terms. He's thrived. Like, comment, and subscribe.